We are at the quality feeding forum going on in Kearney, uh, joined now by Dan Bossy, who is president of Ag Resources. And uh, Dan, uh, most folks are familiar with you, based out of Chicago, talking about a, a number of different things. Let's uh, get to the economics of it. Uh, uh, let's first talk about this beef industry. Uh, still, we are in uh, rare air. We are in rare air, Ken, and I think it's good times to come for the foreseeable future. I mean, there's going to be a lot of volatility in Chicago. Uh, you could see cash cattle prices uh, rise five and ten dollars a week and not have a tremendous impact but that's the new uh, landscape that the beef farmer is going to be looking at and his chore is really managing that market risk but generally speaking we're very upbeat because of cheaper feed costs uh, of course higher cash, cash cattle prices the big variant of course being feeders as we look at where you are with commodity prices one would think that you would have even more uh, heifer retention and, and maybe you break this cycle but looks like we're not going to see that at least for the foreseeable future uh, it really doesn't I mean cow slaughter rate Rates have held up much higher than we thought. We're still not seeing the expansion, even with the good grass this year. So it's going to take a while. It's kind of like hitting a fence post uh, repeatedly in the, the hard soil. It just takes hit after hit after hit to get the cow calf man understanding that this is a new landscape and he needs to be expanding. Let's uh, talk about grains. Uh, the Pro Farmer Crop Tour uh, spent some time in Nebraska, and of course they're around the Corn Belt. Uh, market is reacting to that, but uh, as many folks thought, uh, we were going to see lower grain prices. Have we talked ourselves out of this, or is this really uh, what we kind of? Expected. Well, I think it's kind of what we expected. Um, as we think about corn yields, we think the final yield will be between 172 and 178. It's a big crop. Uh, where we get rid of it and what we do with it is the next fourth questions forthcoming. But, you know, we're in a new landscape now, Ken, in which the grain farmer has to be prepared for lower prices and, and uh, a situation maybe back akin to, let's say, the mid-1990s to the 2004 time frame before we got into ethanol. Well, as we uh, look and see record uh, corn, record soybean acres, looking at uh, a record or near record uh, yield as well. Uh, uh, so the, the numbers are out there, but, uh, but the price won't necessarily be there to support what we need. Yeah, and the Brazilians are looking at expanding their production. We think uh, Brazil could do 93 or 94 million metric tons compared to 85 last year. So it looks like every farmer around the hemisphere is uh, gravitating towards oil seeds, and that just means the soybean market probably has the most downside potential as we look forward. One of the uh, stories that is becoming uh, emerging uh, every day, it's something different, is transportation of this year record crop. Uh, we talk about uh, uh, fuel costs, but that's not really the issue. The issue is, uh, as we look at uh, train transportation and, and using the rails. Yeah, it really is a story of logistical availability of rail cars and locomotives and, and even the people that uh, are hired for that industry. And so uh, we need more of all of that, and, and they're just not there. And so there's this rush, if you will, for energy G and AG to compete going forward for available track supply. And we fear, anyway, that uh, these high rail rates are here to stay. And uh, uh, Ken, we're now trading at $3,100 for a unit train on a secondary market. It's up tenfold from a year ago, and that just means lower cash basis uh, levels to the producer. Well, here we are at uh, the end of summer as we look to the fall. Um, how are you seeing things with the grains and the livestock as well? Well, we see the grains continuing to grind lower, unfortunately, unless we have an abnormal uh, early end of the growing season, a frost freeze. But assuming we can get by, let's say, September 20th or 25th, the harvest will start, and we expect harvest pressure to be uh, more robust than we've seen. The other interesting thing about this year is never before has the world produced record large corn, wheat, and soybean crops all within the same year. So this is a new environment not only for us domestically but globally. And so there's lots of competition. Uh, we are not seeing the same competition in livestock. We still think there's reasons to be robustly bullish on the cattle market. Maybe not so much with hogs with a new immunization coming for PED, but uh, we think the grain farmer needs to be thinking forward and needs to be making sales in these what we call uh, premium back month futures. Are you concerned much with what's going on in, uh, in Russia, that Russia-Ukraine situation and others? Well, we're watching it every day. Uh, I, I think at this point, if Putin hasn't moved by now, I'm a little doubtful that he, he will. Uh, the, Putin really wanted that deep water port of Crimea. He's calling it a, a vacation destination, but that's really not the case. It's all about having that port availability in the wintertime. Uh, but Russia and Ukraine have large crops in their own. They need to move them short of sinking a freighter at the head of the Vosporus in the Black Sea. I don't know how that grain trade has slowed. So we think grain trade persists. And strangely enough, in Ukraine, um, because it's, it's all about execution, prices probably will go lower than they think because people don't have confidence in buying grain forward and getting it executed out of that region of the world. All right, Dan, thanks a lot. You're welcome, Ken. Dan Bossy, the president of Ag Resources, has joined us from the Quality Feeding Forum in Kearney. For Ag View, I'm Ken Rogers.